Hello there guys and welcome back to the semi-automated farm on my Feed the Beast Horizon server. And uh, if you remember last time I was trying to get this little fan setup working so that I could get the canola seeds automated. Uh, what I decided to do in the end was remove the middle fan because technically I did only need one fan. One fan in the middle would have been absolutely fine. Um, a couple of you did mention to me that the way fans work is when they are harvesting, they actually harvest a 3x3 three three area, so 3 wide, 3 high, and the length is then determined by the amount of power going into the fan. Um, but when they're actually blowing objects, it's only a 1x1 one one block, which is why any canola seeds that landed in the middle were getting blown to the end, and any canola seeds that landed in the sides weren't. Technically, I could still have one fan now because the item vacuum is actually very, very effective at sucking in the canola seeds. But the problem I was having is because this is lined up with the middle, it was getting a bit glitchy because sometimes the middle fan would be trying to blow seeds beyond the item vacuum and the item vacuum was trying to suck them back and it was all getting a little bit messy. But these two fans work well. Because there's no fan in the middle, it's not interfering with the, uh, with the item vacuum. If we just have a very quick look in the item vacuum and just remind ourselves how many we've got in there. So we've got two full stacks and an extra 49 in there. Uh, we've got a few fully grown plants. If I just uh, flick the clutch on just so these fans kick in, you can already see we've got um, plants breaking and being replanted almost instantly. The other two are taking a little bit longer. They should break. There's another one just gone down there and there's the other two gone. Uh, let's just uh, turn that off now because all of the plants, uh, well none of the plants are mature anymore But everything has re been replanted. There are no empty slots And if we go and look in the item vacuum, you can now see we have uh, three full stacks and an additional five So that is pulling things in incredibly well Now at some point I'm going to build a fertilizer which will allow crops to go quicker and I'm not sure if that again that works with Pam's harvest craft. It'd be nice if it did I guess we will have to uh, have to see how that one works but today's plan, as it has been for the last few videos, and I haven't actually managed to get around to doing it, is to build the grinder. Because I want to be able to supply um, lubricant to the gearbox for this setup. And also the grinder itself is going to need its own little gearbox because of the way we're going to set that up. And that's because, again, I've been told that you can run it with four DC electric engines. So we're also going to have to have a bit of experimentation with the pipes to see how we're going to get the liquid around. The first thing I'm going to want to do is actually build the grinder itself. So let's have a quick look in our list of machines. That's the extractor. There's the grinder. Now the grinder's quite simple. Three base panels, two steel ingots, and a, uh, a steel gear. And those are saws. Now I'm not too sure how we build the saws. I actually have to look those ones up. So let's just have a, a, a quick look in Not Enough Items. And it is that item there. Okay, so it's pretty much the same way as making an impeller, only you put the ingots in the corners as opposed to top, bottom, left and right. So that makes sense. So we need one gear and two saws. I'm sure I've got some of this stuff spare already. Um, well, I've definitely got a gear. But I bet I've only got the one, haven't I? Yep, typical. Okay, not a problem. Plenty of steel. So we're going to start by making ourselves some more gears. And we're going to need to make ourselves two saws. There we go. We've got two saws. And we've got the base panels. Now let me get this. Oh, no, this is going to be the end product, so it's going to be in the work table. Three base panels along the bottom. Gear in the middle. Saw either side. Sometimes it takes a while for them to um, appear. There we go. And then, was it two ingots in the top corners? Yeah, there we go. So, we've got our grinder already. Nice and easy. Now, in order to power the grinder, let's just go back and have a look in the book. The grinder requires 4 kilowatts of power and 128 newton meters of torque. Now, I have been told that it's possible to do this using four DC electric engines. Now the DC electric engines output a kilowatt of power each, so four of them would give me the four kilowatts the grinder needs. But they only output four newton meters of torque. Now obviously if I have four of them, the torque combines, which will be 16 newton meters. So I'm going to need an eight times gearbox in order to step up the torque. So 
We know how to make gearboxes because we've done them before, but it was just a standard 2 to 1 ratio that I did last time. So if we just have a look at the gearboxes, and if we go for a steel gearbox, that's the 4 to 1. We want the, uh, is there not an 8 to 1? Yeah, there is an 8 to 1, there it is. We need the 8 to 1 gearbox. So we need a mount and an 8 times gear unit, which is made with a 2 times gear unit and a 4 times gear unit, and that's made by taking some single gear units. Quite easy to do, you're just basically turning gear units into more gear units by adding more gears. So, in order to save a bit of time, I'm just going to spawn it in. I know how to build it, and I've built the more basic ones, so that's absolutely fine. I've got my engines ready to go. I've also got uh, three shaft junctions and a bevel gear, and a couple of steel shafts because I want to leave some gaps between the machinery just so that I've got room to pipe things in and out later. So, the pipe length isn't too much of a consideration for me at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to put the grinder just here. Now that's going to be the back. So what I'm going to do is turn it round so that the back is on this side. This is where my power is going to go. So what I'm going to need is from the back of the grinder, in fact, I'm actually going to go back on what I said and just move the grinder forward a block or two, I think. Didn't like how far back that was. Uh, that's the gearbox. That's the grinder. So we're going to put the grinder... Mm, no, uh, ooh, I don't know. I can't work this out because I want to try and put a reservoir in at some point. Um... No, I think that'll be fine. We'll, we'll put it there. We'll, we'll make do. So we'll turn it to fa face the right direction. I am going to put a shaft behind it. Now obviously, um, red is output, green is input, so that needs to be turned around. So the every direction but the right one. So the input is on this side. So this is where the gearbox is going to go. So the gearbox can go in next, and again... Green is input, red is output, so it's up the wrong way. Okay, that's fine. Now, it's set as torque to standard at a ratio of 8. So, what I want now is another shaft. Again, input needs to be on the back. And now I need my engines. Now, I haven't really left myself a lot of room here. One, two, three, four. So, I'm going to leave myself a one space gap. Um... One, two, three, four. I'm going to go the other way. So, what I am going to have is my four engines. Yeah, just making sure I've got this right in my head before I screw it up. My four engines are going to go in this orientation. They're all going to face the same way. So, we've got four engines. And we want to have... The bevel gear on this one, because this engine has only got to output power in... Uh, is it the bevel gear? Yeah, because this engine only has to output in one direction. So, it's the purple is the input, because that's coming from the engine. So we want the purple input, and we want the... We look at the lines, not the blocks... So, because currently it's showing us that the green is the input and the uh, green, green is the input, red is the output. So we want this yellow line. This yellow line is the output, and the purple line or the pink line, whichever colour you prefer, is the input. So, if we click on here, the pink is the input, the yellow is the output. If we look at it now with the screwdriver, green is input, red is output. That's absolutely fine. Now we need the shaft junctions. Now the shaft junctions are going to be on. Um, combine mode which they should be by default so we need to pop them all three of them down you know, it looks a bit messy now they're going to have to work so that they get the two inputs so the two green sides is going to be the neighboring machine and the engine and the output side is going to be into the next one so keep going round we'll eventually get it there we go so it's getting an input from that engine it's getting an input from this bevel gear, which is that engine, and it's outputting to this shaft junction here. So we want the same thing here, input from this shaft junction, input from that engine, and it outputs into this box. And this one is going to be slightly different because this one wants to input from the engine and this shaft junction, but output into this shaft. So 
we want it in that configuration, inputting from there, there, and output. So if I were to turn those on now, which I'm not going to do because I don't have any lubricant in the uh, gearbox currently, but we are going to just deal with that very quickly. I know the whole purpose of doing this is to actually get be able to put lubricant in the thing anyway, but I want to be able to get it started up without it doing too much damage because I want to be able to make sure the whole system works. So we do have a bit of lubrication in the, uh, in the gearbox now. In order to turn these engines on and off more easily, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some redstone down behind them. I could have had them running permanently and just placed a... That's a torch. Uh, I could have had them running permanently and just placed uh, a clutch in the in the entire system. Uh, but I figured just being able to turn the engines on and off would be easier. So hopefully this is going to work and not cause too much damage to anything. So you flick the switch. And nothing is happening. It's a possibility that these red that these aren't connecting up with the uh, with the engines. Okay, that's unusual. Let's just break the redstone, break the lever. And let's just try putting the lever down directly next to the engine. See if it works. It does. So obviously our little um, our little redstone setup there wasn't working, which is a bit of a shame. It should do. Maybe it needs to be on the uh, on some adjacent blocks, but we can sort that out later on. For now, we'll just use separate uh, separate levers, and then I'll get the redstone working. So let's just turn. I'm hearing noises. Right, the gearbox is turning. So let's just examine the gearbox. No damage. We use our angular transducer. So we are getting four kilowatts from the uh, engines. So we're getting 4 kilowatts at 256 rads. We are outputting at only 32 rads. Uh, can't see where it's telling me what my um, torque is there though. Which is a, a bit of a shame. Um, but if we look here, it, again, it doesn't tell us what torque it's receiving. Uh, the engines tell us what they're... Oh no, it doesn't actually tell us anywhere what the amount of torque is. Although if, it's, if we're getting... A, um, 4 kilowatts at 32 rads, we must be getting um, 128 uh, newton meters of torque. And the grinder does appear to be working, its speed, power and torque are all set to what it should be. Now I'm just going to quickly um, stop these engines because the grinder says it requires lubricant as well. So does that mean the grinder requires its own lubricant to work? Let's just turn all of these off before the grinder explodes. Getting a lot of sparks there from these gears. Um, that's simply because the engines are all running at different speeds. Hopefully it shouldn't do too much damage to anything. I don't think it does cause any damage. This is another reason why I wanted the ability to turn them all on and off at the same time. Well, I can't see any anywhere that we could have damage here. If we just click on it... Um, it grinds stone to cobblestone, cobble to gravel, gravel to sand, and that sort of thing. It also plays a critical role in the lubrication of gearboxes. It grinds the canola seeds up into an oil usable as lubricant. This machine's operational speed goes up as the input speed does. Now, it doesn't say that it actually requires any lubricant. We don't seem to be able to put lubricant in, so maybe that's just an internal storage tank for the lubricant that it produces. So, assuming that it is, let us go and turn on these engines, which will cause a sparks for a few seconds until they're all in sync. Ow! Um, okay, apparently... Apparently, if you stand on the grinder, it hurts. Interesting to know. Right, let us go and get ourselves some canola seeds. And uh, let's not step on the grinder. So, if we put canola seeds in here, I'm assuming. Okay, now we're just producing something. So we do have a working system. It is quite uh, quite large. I mean, obviously, I could make it two blocks smaller by not using these two uh, these two shafts. The reason I did that is because I'm going to be wanting to pump some of the uh, 
lubricant back into this gearbox so I do want to be able to uh, to do that and feed it backwards and it gives me a little bit more room for pipes yeah so it's going straight into this lubricant thing here okay so I've been looking through the list of pipes and things you can make and the two things that I've discovered are I was way off the mark there we've got a lubricant hose now a lubricant hose carries canola lubricant oil um, from the grinder to the gearboxes directly. This transmission is done automatically and they will connect to any grinder or gearbox automatically as well. Now that doesn't help with storage. There is a thing you can build called a reservoir, which we'll look at in a second, uh, in a second. but it's to use a reservoir we need the valve pipe. The valve pipe, like other pipe types, extracts liquid from reservoir. Ah, no, I'm incorrect because it says the valve pipe like other pipe types extracts liquid from reservoirs if placed below it. So if we have a reservoir we should be able to place any type of pipe below it to draw from it. However the valve pipe remains inert until it's given a redstone signal. So, so all of these liquid pipes will carry from reservoirs. Pipes carry liquids from pumps to machines and reservoirs. So if I want to build a reservoir can I pump into it using the uh, the lubricant hose? So that's going to be the thing to find out now. So we're going to make some lubricant hoses, and we're also going to make a reservoir. I think lubricant hoses should just work in the normal crafting table. Of course they don't. Um, let's try that again then. Let's make a, let's make a few of them. Having one of those days. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. There we go. Yep, we have lubricant hoses. Got a fair few of them as well. Oh, I've got loads of them because it's 16 per stack. There we go. And all, that's all my stuff that was in the other one that has now dropped down into the basement. So let's just pick all that back up. Now, reservoirs. We should be we should be okay with one for now. They're made using base panels, which of course we're completely out of because there's never enough base panels. Let's just make a load of those. So we've got all the base panels we should ever need. And a reservoir, I think it was just made... Was that a reservoir? No, it's an auto breeder. Make it a bit higher. A reservoir. There we go. So that's a reservoir. Apparently you can actually... Um, oh, no. Didn't have nearly as many of those as I thought I did. Let's make even more. Actually, I don't want the reservoir being too big. So I'm just going to make two reservoirs because I can put you can put them side by side. So apparently what you can do with reservoirs if we get two of them. I believe reservoirs can only be one deep. Now we are going to have to build them off the ground because I want to be able to pump liquid out of them. So let us place a block. This is just going to be a temporary block. Let us place a block here. And this is going to be messy. It's going to look ugly, but you know, it's Minecraft. Nothing ever looked good in Minecraft. So we're going to place our reservoir on top of that. And we're going to put another one next to it. Oh, shift and click. Now that should give us a double reservoir. And it has. That they're, They've joined into one single box. We can now um, smash away that wooden block. So what I should be able to do is take a lubricant hose and run it from the um, grinder. I was trying to go from the top there, actually, but I suppose this will uh, this will do. And that should be able to connect into the reservoir. And the reservoir is indeed filling with lubricant. We should also be able to go from here back into this gearbox, which it certainly looks like it's doing. If we just have a look at the gearbox. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Don't have the screwdriver selected when you're trying to right-click on stuff. Um, hopefully that gearbox... Uh, 6959. Uh, Not sure how much oil it's making at the moment, because it is quite slow. Um, 6958. Obviously it's using some. But we are getting some in the, uh, in the reservoir. And then we should also then be able to... I mean, none of, none of it's coming out of the reservoir at the moment. I think if we actually click on the reservoir, it'll tell us how much is in there. Yeah, so there's 364 in the reservoir. 
it's probably using more than it's outputting. This is probably the issue. 6960, it has gone up slightly. And 364. Six, yeah, it's uh, it's just not outputting that fast. That's uh, that's where the problem comes in. Actually, quite slow. But it should work. It should work that way. What I'd like to do, though, is um, is connect this up a little bit differently. It didn't go where I wanted it to go, and I want it to work in a slightly better way. So I'm just going to quickly break these blocks. And what I want to do is I want the output from the top of the... It's not going to output from the top of the grinder, is it? It's not going to work. Typical. Let's do it on this side then. Plenty of room. I'm going to output from this side of the grinder. And we are going to go up and across and into the reservoir. So it's going into the reservoir that way. And then I want a pipe coming out of the bottom of the reservoir. And we're going to go this way. And are they going to join up? Yeah, eventually. Just be really slow about it. And we're also going to go this way. And yes, I know it's messy, but I like it being messy. Okay. So the lubricant hoses do draw from the reservoir, and we go into the reservoir. We are gaining liquid slowly. Um, but let's bear in mind at the moment we're not currently pumping any liquid into that gearbox. This gearbox is absolutely full. So we're not currently putting any liquid at all into this gearbox. And in all honesty, I won't have this gearbox on permanently because it doesn't need to be on permanently. Um, this gearbox is now on uh, 6961. Of course, it doesn't have any liquid going into it at the moment, so we don't need to worry about that. And this should just be filling up. So 86. It's quite slow. Very, very slow to, to fill this reservoir. But um, it, it should be working. So what I'm going to do is connect up that last block just so that this um, this will draw straight from the reservoir now. So instead of the liquid coming out of the grinder and then being split between this gearbox and the reservoir, it's going to go into the reservoir and then the liquid in the reservoir is going to be split equally between the two gearboxes. As this gearbox is full, it should all be going into this one. And obviously the system doesn't need pressure. There you see it's actually taking the liquid that's already in the reservoir. So we now know how to build liquid tanks, and we know how to build a um, lubricant hose as well, and so we can store the lubricant. Now the only thing that I am going to struggle with a little bit, and let's just uh, let's just flip the switch here and just get some of these these canola seeds wrapped up because you can see the plants have regrown already. The only thing I'm going to need a little bit of assistance on here, guys, is um, first of all daylight because zombies and stuff, is how to actually pipe the canola seeds from my uh, little suction item vacuum thing over there over to the grinder because obviously we don't have uh, red power with its pneumatic pipes we don't have build craft with its transport pipes and i've been looking through the handbook for rotary craft rotary craft i'm having a barry kripke moment again i've been looking through the handbook for rotary craft and I can't find anything about transport pipes. So how do I actually get the canola seeds from a chest or from another machine and transport them here? Can it be done with rotary craft or do we have to use another mod? That's the thing that I'm interested to know. Will I need to use another mod? What I am going to do for the time being, just so I can leave this system running, is I'm going to spawn in a hopper. And I'm going to put that hopper above the uh, the grinder and make sure it connects. Normally this sort of thing I would actually have it so all the pipes are buried underground. And that is probably something I will do at a future time. But for the purposes of seeing how things work and the fact that I keep having to move stuff around. and I think it's better just to have everything visible. So let's put these canola seeds in the hopper. Now they're already disappearing so it's definitely working. There we go. And... Uh, Yep, the canola seeds are being filled into the grinder. But as you can see, it's still not very fast. I mean, all that all that time it's been running, and it's only managed to get through sort of uh, 14, 14 lots of canola seeds. The reservoir isn't really filling up. That's because, of course, this uh, gearbox is still requiring lubricant. This one's now not running, so it's not, uh, 
not receiving anything at all. So that's full. But uh, we'll keep our eye on it. We'll see what happens. Hopefully this will fill up. I'm not too sure what happens when it does become full. Does it overflow? It doesn't have a lid on it. Uh, or does this thing just stop working? Uh, who knows? But um, yeah, definitely keep my eye on that. So let me know, guys. Either get in touch with me via the usual methods. Either send me a private message or leave it in the comments. I really don't mind. But yeah, I want to find a way to basically take the canola seeds out of this um, item vacuum and transport them all the way over here and deposit them into the grinder. I don't mind... Um, I'd prefer it to be rotary craft because I'd like to kind of get this whole mod working together So if there's a way of transporting items around using something in rotary craft that is preferred if I have to use another mod Then I will look into that, but I'd like to find something that's fairly low on the tech end I don't want it to be something that I have to Go through a, a lot of processes just to move stuff around like for example using golems in um Thorn, uh, Thorncraft because you do have to do quite a lot of research to get to the point where you can build golems So let's let's see if we can find a solution for moving items around using rotary craft or possibly using a different mod But is relatively quick easy and cheap to do So that's it for this week guys um, Well for this video there might be another video uh, this week, but no promises not too sure what I'm going to cover next I've got the majority of the stuff covered that I kind of wanted to do with this setup apart from of course getting the uh, getting the items across uh, but I think I'm going to read up a little bit on the uh, Ars Magica 2 mod and hopefully in the next couple of videos I'll be able to show you something from Ars Magica 2 so thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you next time so until then goodbye for now